So we have entered the second week of the preseason, and for some teams, we are seeing a lot of what we saw last year. I'm talking about the Washington Commanders defense. Specifically, I wanted to look at how they played against the Chiefs in their first two drives. If you remember from a video I created a few months ago, I explained what went wrong in 2021 and why this defense was so much worse than the previous year. Unfortunately, not a lot has changed. I still see the same individual player mistakes, I see a lot of the same basic coverage busts, and I also see a lack of finishing from the defensive line. These issues are extremely apparent on third downs. These mistakes allowed Patrick Mahomes to drive down the field on two consecutive drives, and he scored two touchdowns. Before we begin though, if you could do me a huge favor and like and subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. So anyways, I mentioned that third downs were a big problem for this defense. There is still a big problem in preseason as well. Starting with the first one in the first drive, you have a third and one. With how good Washington's interior defensive line is, I was hoping they would be able to stuff the Chiefs running game here. That obviously didn't happen. Pay close attention to Deron Payne, who is number 94, and also Jonathan Allen at number 93. The Chiefs went heavy using 22 personnel. They have two tight ends on the right side, while they actually shifted their right tackle to lining up outside the left tackle here. For some reason, this unbalanced look really threw a huge punch in how Washington filled their gaps. In the box, the Chiefs have 10 players including the quarterback. Their solo wide receiver is off the screen to your right. Meanwhile, the commanders only had eight men directly in the box. Their outside cornerback and safety are lurking just outside. I want you to look at the obvious gap between the center and the left guard. There isn't a Washington defender lining up in this gap. Since there's no defender here, the center and the right guard were able to double team Jerron Payne. Then, the moment that the right guard had Payne one-on-one, -on -one, the center was able to seal the linebacker while the left guard blocked Jonathan Allen. This gave a hole big enough for the fullback to get through on his dive. Personally, the issue I see from this play is the personnel that Washington used. I don't get why Washington didn't bring on an extra defensive lineman. They should have swapped out a defensive back and played in a 5-3 front instead of this 4-4 look like they did here. Not only that, but two of the defenders at the linebacker level were smaller defensive backs. The Chiefs had a clear size advantage here. Anyways, the Chiefs converted on this play, but Washington was able to get them another third down just three plays later. This is a third and six. I'm going to pause the tape after Mahomes hit the last step of his drop. You have a potential throwing window to Justin Watson over the middle of the defense. Honestly, I'm a bit surprised Mahomes didn't take it. If he threw it where I paused it, and if he placed the ball low and by the right hash, this could have been a completion. Regardless, the rest of the coverage is actually pretty good up to this point. However, watch the running back coming out of the backfield. Safety Cameron Curl is staring down Mahomes, and he completely lost track of the running back sprinting towards the sideline. What makes matters worse is that this is very easy for Mahomes to step up in the pocket as he only felt pressure off the left edge. He easily stepped up, he swung the ball to his tailback, and this was an easy first down. If Curl wasn't staring at Mahomes and he was actually watching the running back instead, this likely would have forced a fourth down. Now before we look at our third third down attempt, I want to give a huge shout out to HelloFresh for sponsoring this week's video. HelloFresh is here to make eating better and easier. No grocery stores, no stressful meal planning, just everything to prepare a wholesome delicious meal all delivered to your door. This week, my wife and I tried the bulgogi pork tenderloin. It was so incredibly good. The produce was fresh and a ton of flavor, the meat was portioned perfectly for both to share, and the recipe was so easy to follow and it made the entire experience effortless. They have foolproof step-by-step -step recipes that make cooking simple and fun. Now, not only was everything delicious, but HelloFresh helps you reach your goals. They offer vegetarian, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome options that make it easy to stick to your plan. With these options, you can feel good about your choices without sacrificing any flavor. If you go to HelloFresh.com and use my code SAMGOLD16, you can get 16 free meals across 7 boxes and 3 gifts. Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use my code SAMGOLD16 to get 16 free meals across 7 boxes and 3 gifts. So back to the breakdown, the Chiefs were still driving down the field. They just converted their second third down attempt. They were faced with their third third down attempt just 3 plays later. This came on a third and 10. This play right here was by far the most frustrating play I saw. When it's third and 10 from your own 47 yard line, your goal should be to keep everything in front of you. Do not get beat deep on this play. It doesn't matter if the offense picks up five yards because that's still a long field goal anyways. Even if the offense chooses to go for it on fourth down, you did your job on third and that's all that matters. Instead of using this simple logic, Jack Del Rio blitzes Mahomes while the guy who was supposed to cover Justin Watson was lining up over the middle of the defense. I really hate this play from start to finish. Now, before we move on, people will probably ask why the deep safety wasn't covering over the middle of the field. I think what's happening is that they're running an aggressive cover two blitz here where he's responsible for the deep right half of the field. With him covering the deep right, I think Cameron Curl is responsible for the deep left. However, since the play designed by the offense attacked that left side before Curl could get back there, this is likely why he was beat so badly. In my opinion, this needless aggression on third and long was absolutely pointless and exposed them for a big game. 
So anyways, the Chiefs scored two plays later. The offense went three and out, and this brings us back to the Chiefs for their second drive. Their fourth third down attempt came with just under two minutes left in the first quarter. Now this play right here could be 100% blamed on the defensive line. The coverage is excellent across the board, but not a single pass rusher is making his way into the backfield. In my opinion, you can't blame the coverage on this play. At a certain point, if there's no pressure and a reasonable time frame, the coverage will break down. I'm also going to give a huge credit to the offensive line for stopping the pass rush, and obviously Mahomes needs a great shout out for the amazing cross the body throw that he did here. Finally, we have our last third down attempt, and this gave the Chiefs their second touchdown on their first two drives. Once again, Mahomes did a great job with his pocket movement, and this bought enough time for Jody Forston to finally get open in the front corner of the end zone. Now, if you watch this play from the defensive standpoint, and if you pay close attention to Cameron Curl, it's not like he was out of position. He picks up the crosser like he's supposed to, it's just that the throw was really good and Forston was able to use his body shield to catch. This is a really hard play to cover, and you just hope in the future the defensive line will be able to tackle Mahomes before he can throw it like this. So after I went through the first two drives while Mahomes was the quarterback, it left a really poor taste in my mouth. A lot of the same issues I saw last season were still happening again. I saw busted assignments, I saw a lack of pressure and finishing from the defensive line, and I saw some horrible play calls that consistently allowed the offense to find good matchups. Washington at this point does not have the championship caliber defense it needs. And for the record, no, it wasn't all bad. For example, Kendall Fuller played extremely well in these two drives. He broke up two passes, and he also covered a deep throw down the sideline. He was Washington's best defensive player by far, and he showed excellent technique in both man and zone. However, when you have your starting lineup making stupid mistakes, it's really hard for me to see the positives. Guys like Kendall Fuller can only do so much. For example, Cole Holcomb was awful in this game. He was getting beat like a drum, and he made some simple mistakes on basic cover four coverages. This is a basic three-level flood concept on the left side of the field. Anytime you see a three-level play design like this, find the linebackers, and that's going to tell you if the defense did a good job. How they cover this play is pretty much the only thing that matters. Jamin Davis is responsible for walling off Kelsey like he did here, and then he needs to get to the flat, which he did. This is good coverage. Cole Holcomb, on the other hand, he needs to wall off the number two receiver in the play, which ends up being Travis Kelsey. The second that he sees the running back hit the flat, he should have sprinted to cover Travis Kelsey, and he should have been there for this throw. However, he sits over the middle of the defense covering nothing, and I just don't get what he's doing. Now, from a blame standpoint, you can't blame the scheme for this mistake. Every defense in the NFL runs cover four. So again, how do we reconcile who's at fault? Who do we blame for all these mistakes? Is it Jack Del Rio for poor coaching? Is it the players for not executing even basic assignments? Who's really at fault? Unfortunately, like anything, the answer is always a mix. There's always multiple people to blame. However, we're at this point where I think Washington needs a change. To me, we need to look at the coaching staff because something basic is not getting taught. Well, that's all I have for you in this one. I really hope you enjoyed it. Until the next time, if you want to support the channel, feel free to follow the link to my Patreon, as well as finding me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.